It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. Our honor goes to you. He has a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, Anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to... Um, let's open up to... Let's open up to, uh, I don't know, where we want to open up to? Let's open up to John chapter 7, verse 14, or John chapter 14, verse 7. 7, 14. John chapter 7, verse 14. Baby, you know where my phone is? <clears throat> you know Appreciate you, baby. It's John chapter 7, verse, uh, Verse 14. That's what I'm looking for. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. Mm -hmm. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? And the Jews marveled, right? Our people, they marveled. They said, How this man know letters? And he ain't never learned. How he know the scripture and he ain't never learned it? He never been to seminary class, right? That's how people would look at it today. You know, like, how he know he ain't never even been to seminary class? How he know this? How he preaching the word? Who ordained this guy? You know, that's what they ask you today. Who are you ordained by? Who's your church head? You know what I mean? You know what What's going on here? You know what Who is this guy? Where did he come from? Let's hear about it. Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. All right? He said, My doctrine is not my doctrine, but it's his that sent me. All right? Let's hear about it. If any man will do of his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Mm. That's what it come down to. If you do the will of the Most High God, then you will know if the doctrine come from God or not. Right? It's not anywhere. A lot of times we have it backwards. A lot of times we get that, get that thing all confused. You know what I'm saying? We be thinking like, okay, well, I have to know first. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just have to know first. Now, get your butt in the book, do what it say, and then you will know if somebody teaching you something that's from God or not. That's all you got to do. Right? You gotta jump out there, start obeying. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff that people disagree about in the body. Some of the stuff just flat out right. Ain't nobody going You're not gonna have nobody sit here and argue with you. Like they they'll tell you. I mean, it's not wrong for me to you know what I'm saying go sleep with whoever I want to. I mean it's oh I mean that's okay. I don't see. But they never gonna argue with which, if you had two choices. Which one is more right? The person who choose one person and commit to them for the rest of their life. Or the person who just do whatever they want to do. You might uh, you might feel like, I mean, it's okay to do either. That's not the question, though. Which one is more right? Just from a logical, a health safety, like however you want to look at it. Which one do you think is more pristine? They don't tell you. Ain't nobody going to argue that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, it don't matter. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible we can go back and forth on. But some stuff you can look at it and be like, well, this thing is just more. That's just a good idea. That's like, just right. You know what I'm saying? It's just the right thing to do. All right? Just get in there and do it. Start doing the right thing. Start doing what the Most High God said to do, and let's see if you you see if you can figure out if somebody lying to you or not about some word. Right? It come that easy. Right? It come that easy. At the end of the day, it's all about did you hear the word? Did you learn the word? And did you continue to walk in it? Right? If you do that, man, we'll see the kingdom at the end of the day. Where we leave off last week, we talked about Deuteronomy. We wrapped it up. Moses died. Right? So now our people got to be brought into the land. That means they got to get brought into the land by Joshua. I'm going to need my phone. I need some notes today. I don't know where my phone is. Deuteronomy 34, 12 is where we left off. So that means we're going to jump into Joshua. It's Joshua chapter 1. We're going to do Joshua chapter 1, verse uh, verse 1. You know what I'm saying? Keep reading. I'm about to, I'll be right back. Go check your shorts. You just go check my shorts. No. I don't know. I don't know where Star is. Can you go 
after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses his minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, uh -huh. even to the children of Israel. Right. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Uh -huh. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Uh -huh. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Right, he told me, he said, the same way I was with Moses, that's the same way I'm going to be with you. Huh? What did he say? I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. He said, I will not fail thee, nor will I forsake thee. He said, the same way that I was with Moses, that's the same way I'm going to be with you. Right? And that goes back to what we kind of talked about last week. Grab uh, Numbers. <clears throat> this is Numbers chapter 27. Alright, goes back to what we were talking about last week. Moses, he, Most High God told Moses, you can't make it into the land. Right? You cannot make it into the land. And the reason why, because when he struck the water according to what the Most High God commanded, he said, do we have to continue to get this water for you? The Most High God was like, you didn't set me apart. You didn't sanctify me. You didn't make me holy. Right? You said, we. It ain't we, boy. It's me. Right? Most High God said, I did that. Don't say it like we, we joined together, like I needed your collaboration. He said, yeah, I got to be set apart. So because Moses didn't believe him, he charged him with unbelief. Right? He said, because you believe me not. So since he charged him with unbelief for that act, the Most High God said, you can't make it into the land. Based off of that one thing. Right? According to what the Most High God said. So now it's the time for us to kind of figure out what happened from there. This is Numbers chapter 27. Give me verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into this mount of Byron, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And when thou hast seen it, thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother was gathered. All right. For he rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin, in the strife of the, con of the congregation, to sanctify me at the water before their eyes. Uh -huh. That is the water of Meribah, That's and right. Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin. Mm -hmm. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, let the Lord, the God of the 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 God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Right? So Moses was looking at it. The way Moses, how, how he is looking at it, he is looking like, okay, you're going to take me out the game. I get it. I can't go and see the land. I get it. But we got a whole bunch of people right here, and they need to go into the land. And these people have been rebellious the whole way through with me leading them. You take me out of the picture, just set somebody else over the people. Like, you sanctify somebody else. Show them who you are. That way they'll follow this next guy the same way they follow me. Right? Moses was concerned about the people at that point. He was like, okay, we'll set a man over the congregation. Right? Let's hear about it. Which may go out before them and which may go in before them and uh -huh. which may lead them out and which may bring them in. Mm -hmm. That the congregation of the Lord be not sheep which have no shepherd. Right? And if you remember when Yahushua got struck, right? When Yahushua was struck in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the... Uh, the, uh, what am I trying to say? And the disciples scattered. Yeah, the disciples scattered, but the, uh, the Pharisees had sent, you know what I'm saying, the authorities after them, right? And so they struck Yahushua, right? After that, all the disciples scattered, right? Because that was according to the prophecy. The Most High God had to set a man over the congregation. That was Yahushua, right? So in the same way, we about to see Yahushua, son of Nun, Joshua, right? Remember, Joshua, Yahushua, Jesus, all that comes from the exact same name, right? It's just different different languages in which they were translated into, so you pronounce them different. But they come from the exact same name. All of them come from Yahushua. Yahushua to English is Joshua. Yahushua to Greek is uh, Yahushua to Greek to English. After that, it's Jesus. Right? You know what I'm saying? So it, it all comes from the same name. Let's uh, let's keep reading. Yes. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee. Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thy hand upon him. Yeah. Right? So Most High God was like, all right, I agree with you. Let's go ahead and get Joshua. Remember, Joshua was, that was his, you know what I'm saying, that was his man. That was his right-hand man, because Joshua used to always, you know what I'm saying, kind of wait on him and kind of serve him, make sure he was all right, taken care of. So Joshua was the perfect guy to kind of put him in that position. Right? Keep going. 
And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. Mm -hmm. And he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. Now that's a difference. <clears throat> Y'all remember Moses, right? Y'all remember Moses? You remember when, when Miriam and, and uh, Aaron came against Moses and they was like, why are you with this Ethiopian woman? They are like, man, you know what I'm saying? We Hebrew. Why are you messing with this Ethiopian woman? Right? And then they were, and the most high God responded, they're like, why are you talking to Moses that way? He explained to him, he was like, if there be a prophet among you, I'm going to talk to them by a vision or a dream. But he said, I don't talk to Moses that way. You know how I talk to Moses? Face to face. I'm talking to him in apparent words, just like I'm talking to anybody else. Either I'm just talking to people. When I talk to Moses, it's just like when you talk. He said, when I'm talking to a prophet, I'm talking to them with dark sands, everything cryptic. Don't nobody know what I'm talking about. If I'm treating Moses that special, why are y'all so stupid to run y'all mouth against Moses? Right? So now, if you look at what he's saying now, Moses was different. He told to Moses face to face. When Joshua wanted to hear from God, guess who he got to go to? The priest. He got to go to the priest. Joshua not talking to God straight up. You see the Most High God set that up. Why would the Most High God have to set that up in there? He told him it was only Moses that he was going to speak like that. Grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Because he said it had to be in a vision or a dream. It, Deuteronomy chapter 18. That's why it's important. We got to know our law. We got to know our history. Otherwise, anybody come along every day, every day they talking about a new Messiah. They got these Hebrew dudes running around now talking about one dude called himself the darn Holy Spirit. Another dude call himself, you know what I'm saying, call himself the Messiah. All the a lot of these guys call himself Messiah. They got they got a dude that died in uh in the land of Israel. They actually, you know what I'm saying, they the people accuse him of stealing credit cards and you know what I'm saying, doing all types of scams, it's raising enough money, get over into Africa, then they made their way over to Israel to a place called Demona. You know what I'm saying? So the story goes. I don't you know what I'm saying? I don't really know. I don't want to explain nobody, I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's how the story goes. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying, they get over there and they get a guy over there to call himself the Messiah. Right? He's supposedly the Messiah. He died, by the way. You know what I'm saying? But he's supposedly the Messiah. You got people calling himself Messiah all the time. If we know our, our law and our history and we know how things are supposed to play out, we can't be duped like that. We look at that stuff and be like, no, well, you a liar. So that tells me everything I need to know about this operation. That thing just cool. I mean, it just thank, thank you. It makes it easy for me. Right? This is, uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 18. Or what I want, 12? Nine? 18, 18. 18? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, probably one before 18, right? Yeah. Probably yeah. <clears throat> nine? Or 12? It's out of one at all, right? You trying to say when he, uh, he's speaking to him in a vision or a dream? Nah. Uh, this is uh, Deuteronomy 18. Oh, raise a prophet? Yeah. 18, 18. 18, all right. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, <laughs> verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto you and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Right? So this is why it's important that the Most High God had to point it out. Oh no, when Joshua will come and he want to hear from me, he better holler, holler at Eliezer. He got to talk to the priest. And the priest ain't even going to talk to me directly. You know who he got to talk to? Um, the Urim and the Thurman. Right, we didn't talk too much about the Urim and the Thummim, but that was what the priests were giving. They was, you know what I'm saying? People say it was rock. We don't really know what they were. You know what I'm saying? But it was something that the that the priests had that in some way would give them an indication of what God is saying. Right? The name of them, I think it was uh, I think it's perfect. One of I think Urim mean perfect, and the other one mean uh, light. You know what I'm saying? Like perfect light together is what they mean. If I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I looked into it, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's perfect light is what they mean. Right? So you get the Urim and the Thummim, and it give you perfect light. You know what I'm saying? It give you direction. Right? From the Most High God. But you're not speaking to God directly. The priest ain't speaking to God directly. You know what I'm saying? Joshua not speaking to God directly. Moses did, though. So he had to point it out because he already told him, Moses, I'm going to raise up a prophet just like you. So if he didn't do that, you know what I'm saying? He didn't leave them little, them little clues. Somebody mess around and be like, this is the prophet. Joshua is the prophet that Moses spoke about. No. That's not him. Right? It's going to be a different Joshua. You know what I'm saying? Much later in history, it's going to be a different, different Yahweh Shua, son of, you know what I'm saying? Son, son of God. You know what I'm saying? Not son of none. Right? But it's good. Most of our God had to point that out for us. He always leaves his stuff to cover itself. 
All right, let's go back. Let's go back to Joshua chapter 1. I think we left off what? Verse 4, verse 5, verse 6. Uh, Joshua 1, verse 5. It's Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. All right? Once you have the information, you can start You can start putting everything together. You can start putting stuff in place. Once you have everything in place, then you can say, okay, I know this has to happen. I know this can't happen. So if anything happens that goes against what you already know, then you know that's not even what I'm looking for. Anybody come up to you talking about, oh, this is what God looked like. No, nah, that's not even what I'm looking for. I know. I know for a fact. This is true and that's true. If it go against one of these things, then no. The more parameters you set up on what you believe, the easier it is. That's why when the book say, that's why when we started off, y'all would say, the person who do what the Most High God say do will know whether the doctrine is true. Because the parameters are already set. I know I have to do this and I know I can't do that. Right? Somebody get tell me something that go against them things. Yeah, I'm not even listening to you. That thing, I'm not even killing my time. All right, let's go. This is uh, this is uh, uh, Joshua chapter one verse five. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Mm -hmm. Be strong and of a good. Remember what he said. He said, "I will not fail thee nor forsake thee." That's very important. That thing is very, very important. I will not fail thee, nor will I forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Uh -huh. Only be thou strong and very courageous, mm -hmm. that thou may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. To do most of the law? All the law. He said you better do it. That whole thing, the same one that Moses commanded you. Keep going. <clears throat> Turn not... From it to the right hand or to the left, that thou may prosper where, where, whithersoever you go. Uh huh. Remember, he said, "I will not leave thee nor forsake thee." Keep going. This book of the law shall not be part out of thy mouth. Uh huh. Wait. It sorry. shall not depart out of your mouth. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. Uh huh. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Uh huh. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Uh huh. And then thou shalt have good success. Now you gonna have good success. You gonna be a successful man. This is what most of our God trying to you know. He give him a little pep talk, right? He give him one of them uh them TED speeches. You know what I'm saying? Most of our God walking up there, he's like, listen, it's not gonna work. You gonna be successful. You know how you do it? Keep this darn law. Do everything Moses told you to do, boy. <clears throat> People don't want to hear that though. Keep going. Have not I commanded thee? He said, have not I commanded you? Let's go. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Uh-huh. He said, I'm with you. I won't forsake you. Keep going. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals. For within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you for, to possess it. And mm -hmm. the Reubenites and the Gadites... And the half tribe of Manasseh spake to Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God has given you rest and has given you this land. Your wives and your little ones and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brother and armed all the mighty men of valor and help them. Mm -hmm. Until the Lord has given your brother rest and he has given you, as he has given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God has given them. So remember, our brothers, when we were coming into the land, our brothers chose to, to take the land from, uh, I think it was Sihar. Sihar and the Ba'a, you know what I'm saying? He, uh, he, he, he had some land, we took over his land, we had to fight him. You know what I'm saying? So when we fought him, we won, and we ended up taking over his land. So technically, that wasn't the land that we was coming to get, but we had it. So some of our brothers, you know what I'm saying, the, the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of, uh, the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of uh, Manasseh, half of the tribe of Manasseh, and who else was it? Gad? Gad. Yeah, in the tribe of Gad. You know what I'm saying? Those three, you know what I'm saying, are two and a half technically. They they took some of the land that was outside of what we actually came to get. And so it was a dispute where we were looking like, all right, listen, y'all trying to take the easy way route out. Y'all trying to just chill, take this land. We still got to fight all these people. So Moses got kind of upset. And they were like, no, 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 no. We're going to fight with y'all. We just want this land when everything's said and done. So they left their wives, their cattle, everything that they had, they left it in the land that they, you know, newly acquired, acquired and then now they're about to march over and fight with us. Alright? Keep going. 
until the Lord has given your brethren rest, and as he has given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God has given them, uh -huh. then shall you return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, uh -huh. which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan toward the sun rising. Uh -huh. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that you commanded us, we will do. He said, All that you commanded us, Joshua, we will do. What else? And whithersoever thou send us, we will go. Uh huh. According as we listen unto Moses in all things, so will we listen unto you. Mm. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. That's right. Whosoever he be that does rebel against your commandment and will not hearken unto your words and all that done. you command him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. All right. So the people on this side now. All right. Let's keep going. What is this? Chapter 2? Yeah. It's chapter 2, verse 1. This is Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rehab and lodged there. Mm -hmm. So now they went into the land of Jericho, to a harlot's house. Right? And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in here tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. Mm -hmm. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rehab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house. Mm -hmm. For they be come to search out all the country. Mm -hmm. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and thus there came men unto me. But I wist not whence they were. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went out, I what not. Right? So this is what just happened. Right? We had two men that we sent out into Jericho. Right? Let me see if I, you know, let me see if I can pull up a map for y'all real quick. You know what I'm saying? We're going to try to pull up a map just so y'all can see it. Let's see what we got here. All right, so we are about right here. You know what I'm saying? Most High God sent Moses to Mount Nebo. And then we came. We are right here. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to go to the land of Jericho, which is right here. All right? So we send out men to spy out Jericho. All right? Jericho is a city that got walls all the way to the top, houses within the walls. So two of our men spied out. They end up coming to a lady named Rehab's house. Rahab's house. She is called a harlot. And we learned how to define a harlot based off of Genesis 34. We don't have to get into it. But we learned how to define a harlot as a woman who is fornication, basically. So uh, a, a woman who is no longer a virgin and she ain't married. All right? The same thing for a man. You know what I'm saying? He would be called a whoremonger instead of a <coughs> harlot. So then... Rahab is there, and Rahab hid the men, right? So after she hid them, they start asking questions. The, the, the people at Jericho, you know what I'm saying? They start asking questions like, all right, so we heard that some Hebrews came through here. Where they at? She was like, listen, they were here, and they left, and that's where they are now. I what not. You know what I'm saying? In other words, I don't know, right? So that's what's happened. She's covering for the spies that we sent in. So now watch what happens here. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Right? So now she's lying to them. She basically tells them, they went that away. You know what I'm saying? And go hurry up and get them. Because you might be able to catch them. Right? Really, they in her act. Right? Keep going. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house uh -huh. and hid them with the stalks of flax, which mm -hmm. she had laid in order upon the roof. In order upon the roof. Uh-huh. And the men pursued after them, 
the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they, as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, uh -huh. they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you this land, the land. Your terror is falling upon us, and that all and that faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. Right, so now listen to what Rahab is saying. Rahab is trying to let them know. Listen, we heard about what happened in Egypt. So now you might have a question, like, why would Rahab be helping these Hebrews? Soon as she saw they Hebrew, she like, I'm trying to get on their good side. She like, listen, I heard about what happened in Egypt. I heard how things went down. I heard how the whole Red Sea dried up just so y'all can go across it. She like, man, I'm not messing with y'all. I'm not about to sit here and play these games with y'all, right? What we gotta do? Let's figure it out. It's gonna happen again, right? That thing gonna happen again. And some people have already heard. And some people are going to be like, I'm not playing on the uh, other side of God. I'm not about to hear and play these games. What we need to do? What needs to happen? Just tell me. Right? So Rahab, she took it upon herself. Let's hide him. Right? And after she hit him, she was like, they came in out of She was like, mm -hmm. I think they went that way. Tell them to lie. Right? She was like, man, I think they went that way. Right? I think they went that way. I, don't, I can't tell you. I don't really know. Right? Keep going. Some people would say this is when it's necessary to lie. Huh? I said some people would say this is when it's necessary to lie. Yeah. That ain't what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it's necessary to lie. But, no, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, some people was, will say that. There was some dude, Christian dudes we was talking to that uh, saying that, you know, they was trying to like downplay lying and use this. Go play with Azariah and You know what I'm saying? You know these people aren't crazy. They say hello a lot of stuff. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Uh -huh. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. Right? So she giving him, she giving the spies a game. Our people are terrified of you. Remember, our people going in there and we kind of like, you know what I'm saying? All right, God got us. All right, y'all, God got us. You know how Christians be getting when they, when they something bad happening, they're like, well, you know, you just got to put it in God and just got to trust God. Ain't nothing you can do now, but I mean, trust. I'll tell my mom, I'll tell my mom about some of the stuff going on in my house. I was like, uh, I was like, man, these people, you know, they trying to charge me on both ends. I was like, man, I don't know what I'm about to do. She was like, just pray. You know, say so I, I didn't say I was about to mess with. I, was, I didn't say no. I was like, yeah, okay, man, I think I appreciate it. You know, say so what, you know, say so what you, what you thinking? So I'm supposed to just pray and then stop doing everything? Is that what the Bible teach? No, you do what you supposed to start doing. You supposed to be praying all the way, all, all the way through. What I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna stop doing everything and then pray then? God, I mean, it's in your hand now. Who hands was it in before? My mindset, I get my mindset, it's always in God's hands. That's how I look at it. No matter what I do, it's in God's hands. Right? But it end up for my good and my bad. That thing was God. What you mean? Just pray. Right? But that's their mindset. They, so she, you know what I'm saying? They, you know what I'm saying? They kind of looking at it. That's how they looking. They like, uh, all right, God got us now. We about to go in here. Send two spot. All right, let's figure out where we going. So just imagine, you know what I'm saying? You going in there, these people, you scared of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, the only reason you got the courage to go against these people is because you got God on your side. Then you get there, and then the lady tell you, listen, I, my, you know what I'm saying? He said, listen, I heard what happened to Egypt. You know what I'm saying? All our hearts melted when we heard this thing. You look at that, you be like, man, y'all fool. We about to knock y'all off. You know what I'm saying? So he went back to the crib. Oh, we gonna keep reading. I ain't gonna jump ahead. You watch that. <clears throat> Our hearts did melt, and there did there, there, and neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. Uh -huh. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Mm -hmm. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token. Right? So now she's saying, listen, this is all I want in return for this, you know what I'm saying? What I, you just, I showed you some kindness. Y'all butts could have been killed. You know what I'm saying? They would have came and got y'all only two. They would have came and got y'all butts real quick. Y'all butts could have been killed. So, that's how I rescued you. You know what I mean? Only thing I'm asking for, show the same kindness to me and my father's house. Right? Let's hear what they say. 
and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all they and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Mm -hmm. And the men answered her, our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. He said, y'all, if you keep your door in motion, we got you. Right? He said, our life for yours. You know what I'm saying? You save me, I'ma save you. You know what I'm saying? If you keep your darn mouth shut, we got you. Watch this. And it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Mm -hmm. Then she let them down by a cord to the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. Mm -hmm. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned. How many days? Three days. She got to hide herself there. I mean, they got to hide themselves there. How many days? Three days. Uh oh. Let's look at it. To the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. Okay. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Now what? Now watch what he said. He said, Listen, we're going to be blameless of what you made us swear. But it's a few conditions we got to put on this thing. Let's see. Behold, when we come into the land, in other words, when he said, oh, we're going to be blaming, he said, we're going to do what we're supposed to do. We're going to uphold our end of the deal. But that's what we need you to do. Right? Watch this. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window. I need you to take this scarlet thread, the same one you let us down by. I need you to take that and tie it on your window. Why would that, why would that be important? When we going through and we knocking off everything, you know what I'm saying? You got to understand. We going through most like God said, kill everything. It's a token. How we, how we supposed to know which one? You know what I'm saying? I got, I got a thousand men about to come in here and just lay waste to this, this whole wall. How my men supposed to know which one that these two guys spoke to? They don't know you about faith. They ain't like we can show her a picture. We ain't got no pictures. You know what I'm saying? We no Instagram and nothing like that. So it was like, listen, we had to, you know what I'm saying? We had to figure it out. So he was like, listen. We gonna, you know, he, he, if you can tell, he's thinking about that. He's thinking about that. I don't know how we gonna pull this off. You know what? Tie this to your window. Cause now I can go back and I can tell my people, listen, lady helped us out. You know what I'm saying? Don't touch nothing in that house. The one that got the tongue tied on the window, don't you touch that house, right? So now we can go back and tell them. So that's why it is like, you know what I'm saying? This is red scarlet, you take that and you tie it on the window. You know what I'm saying? Let's hear what up. Which thou did let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thine house into the street, his he said, shall who, be on his own head. He said, whoever leaves the door. This, I mean, listen, I'm going to uphold my end of the deal. What are you trying? Listen, we got our, we're going to uphold our end of the deal. However, we just need you to know, you got to tie the scarlet on there, right? And whoever leaves the door after you in there, oh, they but done. That ain't on us. They but, I mean, they blood is on their own head. That thing ain't my fault. If they leave, I can't help. It. You stay inside and you tie this on your window, you'll be all right. Right? Keep going. And we will be guiltless. He said we will be. He said we going to kill his butt. His blood's on his own hand. And we going to be guiltless of that thing. How we supposed to know? I don't know your darn family. Y'all moseying along outside. We killing these folks. What we, how we supposed to know? The only thing we know is don't mess with the house with the red tie on. That's how they look at it. Right? So how you think Rahab, Rahab just from the beginning, when she heard, remember, she she didn't have, she didn't have, only thing she did is heard about what happened. It ain't like she was there. She didn't see nothing for, her, for, her, for herself. She heard it. And based off of that, she took a leap of faith. You know what I'm talking about? She just looking like, listen, your God is the real deal. I heard but what he could do. Right? That's what it's supposed to be. That's how that's how people are supposed to be saved. You're supposed to hear about what God did in the past and based off of that say, that's who I'm rolling with. And that's how she chose. That's why grab, grab Hebrews chapter 11. It's Hebrews chapter 11. That's why the book, it memorialized people like that. People will look at it. She is a Gentile. She wasn't all none of our people. She is of the people the Most High God said, do not have any dealings with them. Kill them all. Most like God said, kill them all. But based off of her face, she looking like, listen, all I know is your God is the one. <laughs> I ain't about to be caught up in this foolishness. Mm -hmm. Right? This uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Give me Hebrews chapter 11 verse uh, 30. 
By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after. So that's where we at, right? Seven days. We spied out Jericho. So it said, by faith, the walls of Jericho, Jericho fell down. We gonna read about that. Watch this next verse. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Right? She received the spies with peace. They come to spy out her land, her country. Spy out her country so they can. She's a traitor of her country. But she did that thing by faith according to the book. She was looking at it like, man, I heard about God. I heard he's the real deal. And I don't really know nothing about him. All I know is I want to be on his side. So now that's why when these Christians and all these people get to run their mouth, see, this is a time where it's appropriate to lie. That's a lie. This is a woman who don't know our law, who don't know what right and wrong is. The only thing she know is she doing whatever she can based off of what knowledge she had at that point to move in the right direction towards the most high God. How she gonna know is she ain't supposed to lie? She don't care nothing about that. All she knows is I'm about to die. You know what I'm saying? All I want to do is I want to get over there. It's different for us. We know the truth. We know the truth. If you know it and do wrong, that's sin. That's book. If you know to do good and do it not, that's sin. If you know that you know you're not supposed to be lying, then you tell a lie because you got scared for your life like she was, that's a sin. If you don't know, most high God gonna teach you. What you think happened to her when she came into our land? She gotta learn the law. How you gonna live in our land? You don't learn the law. You gotta learn the law. That's our people, and we treat it like our people after that. This is a uh, this is a uh, Romans chapter five. It's Romans chapter five. Give me verse. Uh, give me verse six. Romans chapter five, verse six. For when we were yet without strength in due time, the Messiah died for the ungodly. When we were yet without strength in due time, the Messiah died for the ungodly. What was Rahab? Ungodly. She didn't have no God. That's what she was trying to get to. Every one of us are in that position at some point in our life. And guess what? The Messiah already died. So we was all without God. At some point in our life, Messiah already died. So while we were without God, he died. Same deal with Rahab. While she was without God, most High God sends her somebody that can save her darn life. The whole cap, the whole thing that we talk about is once you know you got to do it right. Now they gave her instructions, specific instructions. Okay. Now that you're here, you got to tie this on your window and you have to stay inside. What if she disobeyed that? Her back gone. Anybody who disobeyed that is gone. That's it. It's gone. It wouldn't matter. I mean, she said her father's house, but I mean, let's just say, let's just say her uncle. You know what I'm saying? And his his sons came in, and they they like, okay, come in the house. How would we know? All we know is anybody in that house we can't mess with. It ain't like we going okay. Uh, it's your uncle. Okay. Oh no, no, he ain't get. Anybody in the house, that's all we knew. It's wartime. I don't care. I'm not messing with the house with the red thing. That's what we have to do at the end of the day. Just obey what the man said. Get in where you can fit in. Obey what the man said. Right? Keep going. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Uh huh. Yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. Uh huh. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, the Messiah died for us. That's what it's talking about when we talk, when we see Rahab telling a lie. Right? She told a lie. And that lie, it looks like to the naked eye for people, that lie got her somewhere good. No. The Most High God is looking at it, while you are yet a sinner, I'm still going to give you a way in. You don't know. That's grace. That's not saying that, you know what, sometimes, you know what I'm saying, it's okay to tell a lie. You can do, No, stop saying that foolishness. Once you know you're not supposed to be lying, what you put lying for? Her lie is an act of faith, because she didn't know. When you tell a lie, it's an act of dis disobedience, because you knew you wasn't supposed to be lying. You ain't gonna see me sitting here and talk. You teach people who don't know. Oh, you didn't know that though? Well, no, we don't do that. Right? The people who know though, you rebuke their butts. You sit your butt down. You know you ain't supposed to be doing that stuff. What's wrong with you? Keep going. 
Much more than being now justified by his blood, we we justified by what? His blood. Mm. We shall be saved from wrath through him. We gonna be saved by wrath. I mean, through wrath, <clears throat> from wrath. You know what I'm saying? Through through the Messiah, because we're justified by his blood. What is scarlet? What what color is that? Red. That's interesting. Right? She was justified by that scarlet. She tied that scarlet to the window. They were like, nah, we ain't we ain't gonna do that. Right? Just like us, the most, high, the most High God sent His Son to die for our sins, and through His blood, we were justified. We covered in His blood? Okay, we ain't gonna mess with them. When the judgment comes, when the wrath comes, okay, we ain't gonna mess with the one covered in the blood. That's how it works. Right? Grab Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. All has got to happen again. Yeah. Only difference is, you know what I'm saying, we get the chill. Side is going to be doing the heart, the heavy lifting. You know, that's, that's, the only thing, that's the only thing that's going to be different this time. Messiah is going to do the heavy lifting. According to what we understand with the scripture. We just going to be doing some suffering before it happens. <clears throat> this is Exodus chapter 12. Give me uh, verse 5. It's Exodus chapter 12, verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep. Y'all sure it wasn't without blemish? Or from the goats. He was without blemish. Y'all sure had no sin. He committed no sin. He was our lamb that was without blemish. What else? And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Uh huh. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts. And they gonna take the blood and strike it where? On the two side posts, on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Oh goodness! So they taking blood and they putting it on the outside of the house on the door, right? And what else gonna happen? Mm. I wonder why they doing that. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Uh huh. And then what else? Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the with the pertinence thereof. Uh huh. Pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remain of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Uh huh. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. Uh huh. It is the Lord's Passover. That's right. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Okay. And the blood shall be to you. He for said the atonement. blood. Remember, they put blood on the outside of their door. He said, and the blood shall be to you a what? For a token. What they call that scarlet? A token. What do you think this was? When we was looking at this, they passed over her. What do you think the blood of the Messiah is on us? He going to pass over us when it comes to the wrath. All this stuff testifies the Messiah. Right? Keep going. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Mm. Grab Luke for me. Luke chapter 14, 13. Matter of fact, before Luke, grab uh, uh, John chapter 15. Give me John chapter 15, verse 1. Then I want Luke chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse uh, probably um, for 20, 22. I am the true vine, and my father is This is husband. John chapter 15, <coughs> verse 1. It said, I am the true vine. And, and the what? My father is the husband. And the fa my father, he's the one who keeps the vine, right? Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away, and every branch that he that bears fruit, he pur he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. He said, "Abide." What does abide mean? Stay. But stay your butt in me, right? Stay your butt inside of me, right? Like, what else? As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, uh -huh. except it abide in the vine, no more can ye accept ye abide in me. He said, you have to abide in me or else you won't grow. Right? What else going to happen? I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Uh -huh. For without me ye can do nothing. Okay. 
If a man abide not in me, he is If you don't forth. stay in me, what happened? He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. In other words, if you don't stay in Yahushua, your butt good enough to get burned. That's why there's no sin in him. Right? You don't stay the way. If you don't stay in Yahushua, there's no way you're going to avoid that fire. Yeah, he who sins, you're obviously outside of him. That's how you stay in. The only way you can stay in, keep his commandments. He can no, keep reading. Let's go. Let's explain it to it. Break it down. You know, we mess around. Stop right there. I'm happy you pointed that out. We stop right there. People are like, yeah, I'm in him. I'm in him right now. Yeah, thank you. I just said my sinner's prayer. I'm in him. Okay, let's see. Let's see how we, how we abide in him. He's going to tell us how. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Mm. Here it is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. So shall ye be my disciples. Mm -hmm. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Okay. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. If you what? Keep my commandments. I got that. Are you keeping them? I don't know. Let's see. Even as I, even have I... Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Okay. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Okay. So what's the command? Because that's the next question. It's like, okay, got to keep the command. Okay, what exactly is His commandment? So, so he ain't talking about the law of Moses. I agree. He's not talking about the law of Moses. What's His commandment? He said, you love one another. That's all Jesus' command is that you love one another. Right? I love everybody. Okay. All right. Let's keep reading. Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. He said, the greatest love you can have is that a man lay down his life for his friends. What did he say? You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Oh, he said, you are my friend if you do whatever I command you. Not just love. Whatever I command you, you are my friend. So let's talk about what he commanded, right? He told you to love, but then he also told you what defiles that love, right? He said, you got love from the heart. Then he said, these are the things that defile your heart, right? And just give you a list of sin, adultery, fornication, stealing, murder, you know what I'm saying? Blasphemy, right? Talking, talking bad about your brother, using foul language about your brothers and all that, right? All these different things, a whole host of other things, right? He said, these are the things that defile your heart. So now... If you think you love it and those things are in you and you sinning, mm, you guess what he gonna say? I never knew. Let's see, let's see if Luke could tell it. This is Luke chapter 13, give me verse 22. All right? Let's see here and try to play with God. You know what I'm saying? Let's see here and try to make out what he said to be to fit you. That ain't how this thing works. We gotta get in where we can fit in. Don't let him fit us. We gotta change, we gotta change how we are to fit inside of what God set up. You know what I'm saying? You can kid yourself if you want to. Be like, oh, no, I know I'm saved. Saved, sanctified. I believe that Lord Jesus Christ died on my... Okay, yeah, get to repeating all them words and all that stuff you've been, you've been learning in church. Okay, repeat it. How much is the word you're obeying, though? It's one thing to be able to say, oh, he's my Lord. It's another thing to ever demonstrate that he's your Lord. That's why James said, you, you know what I'm saying? You let somebody, you know what I'm saying? He said, what did he say? Show me your, show me your faith, uh... Show me your faith. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Right? You you just run your mouth all you want and don't have no works to show it. That's good. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it, and I ain't gotta say nothing. I'm gonna obey the word. This is uh Luke chapter 13. Give me uh verse 22. All right, we look into this book. And it's, it's supposed to give us guidance. It's supposed to, this is our arm and thumb. Right? It's the best, it's the closest thing we got to it. Alright? It's going to give us perfect life. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And so they ask the question. You read this Bible, and a lot of people even come to us. When we, we get to talking about this, but it's different when the pastor teaches. Pastor teaches the Bible, you think, you know, you know, everybody can go to heaven. That's all right, everybody got a chance, right? When we get to teaching this thing, people get to ask nothing like, so you think everybody going to hell? I'm like, no, I didn't say everybody going. You think all the pastors wrong? No, no, I didn't say all the pastors wrong. But that's the impression that they get. They think that we're saying only a very few people are going to make it. What do you know? They ask Yahushua the exact same thing. Go back to 22. Watch it. And he went 
went through the cities and villages. He went through the cities and the villages. Teaching and journeying. Towards and he was people. teaching. So he going through these cities and villages. He's like, yeah, this is how I go, this is how I go. This is how I go, this is how I go. This is how I go, this is how I go. And then what happened? Then said one of them unto him, Lord, are there a few that be saved? So then after that, they hearing the teaching. They like, so only a few people going to make it in? Only a few, <laughs> few people going to be saved? Let's hear about it. And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. He says, strive, make every effort to enter in at the straight gate, the narrow gate, right? Because he said, how many? Many will seek to enter in. He said, many, not many will, will run their mouth, pretend like they're trying to enter. That's not what he said. He said, many will actually be, be seeking to enter. Like, they'll be trying to get in. Right? There's many people who will be actively trying to get to God. But what happened? And shall not be able. Who do y'all think y'all playing with? Y'all moseying along, people running around, acting like everything is okay. The Bible, not Philip, not T. The Bible is telling y'all very clearly. Many are going to be looking. They try. I mean, they're trying to get in. Many people. Not playing around. They're not sitting there pretending. They're not like just, you know, they, they try to say the church people is like, you know, they hypocrites and they fake. He's not, say, he not saying that. He's not saying that these people is, is trying to trick people and make it look like they're trying to get in, but they really not. That's not what he said. He said these people really think they're getting in. Like they really trying. But he said, you know what? They ain't going to be able to. They're going to try. They ain't going to be able to. And then what did he come back and say after that? When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and he began to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. He said the master was in there. He shut the door. And guess where you was at? Outside. And you knocking on the door. And what's the, what they going to say? And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Why? Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. He said, But we was eating with you, Lord. We've, we've literally, like this is people in that time, we've literally sat down and ate with you and we've drank in your presence. What do you mean you don't know us? Right? Let's hear about it. And you have taught in our streets. You taught. You walking in our streets teaching. These are people who touched the man, who saw the man. Right? They interacted with the actual man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they interacted with him. And he goes here and look them in the face and be like, I never knew your butt. <laughs> Let's hear about it. These people take this word way too light. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Mm. So when you get to running your mouth talking about, you know, Jesus' commandment is, is love. I keep his commandment. Well, the people that thought they was getting in, but found out they wasn't, the reason why he told them they got to depart is because they work iniquity. Your butt is still sinning. You can love everything you think you love. I'm just letting you know, your butt is still sinning. That ain't what he's looking for. Your butt going to be outside. You can either be in or you can be out. If your butt get caught out, this is what's going to happen. Keep watching. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and ye yourselves thrust out. Your butt going to be on the outside, weeping, grinding your darn teeth the whole time. And you know why? Because you couldn't stop sinning. That's what iniquity means. Workers of iniquity, that just means they sin. You could not stop sinning. Sure, you love God, and you, so, so you say. And you love the people, so you say. And you went to church, and you fed the homeless, and, and you helped people out, and you gave your last. All that stuff, I mean, all, a lot of that stuff would be really, really, really good if you just obeyed his word. That thing would be really, really proper. You feed the homeless, you sacrifice and give your last, all you got to do is stop sinning. That thing would be good for you in the kingdom. You stop sinning. But you know, people do all that extra stuff, never stop sinning. And all of it is for nothing. They do all that extra stuff. And the only thing the most I got really, really, really asking you to do is just cut out that sin. You can get way further just by cutting out sin. All this extra stuff you're doing, trying to be a good person, so you say, you just killing time. Stop sinning. You want to be good? Stop sinning. Do what the man say. That's how you be good. Right? What else we got right there? Anything else? And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first and the first which shall be last. 
It's John chapter, uh, it's John chapter, uh, give me, give me Exodus actually. Let's go back to Exodus. Watch this. All right? He said, they don't come from the east and the north and the west. They don't come from all over. All right? These people going to be coming from all over. And you going to watch it. Exodus, look. Give me Exodus chapter 12 again. This is Exodus chapter 12. Give me verse 21. All right? He said, you going to watch their butt sit down. You going to watch them. Your butt going to be on the outside weeping all because we couldn't stop sinning. I'm not making this stuff up. This is just the part of the book that they don't explain to you. Even if they read it, they ain't gonna break it down. They ain't gonna sit here and make sure you see what you read. It. You know what I'm saying? They know, they know, they know all y'all just sitting here falling asleep in church anyway. So they might read, they might read across some of this stuff once or twice. They ain't gonna stop. They ain't gonna break it down to you. They ain't gonna teach you. You know what they're gonna spend a whole hour doing, a whole two hours doing? Telling you what grace means. They're gonna spend two hours, two hours trying to tell you you need to forgive people. The stuff you heard every year, year after year, and they still ain't teaching it right. When there's stuff in here that can save people's lives, and they sit here and they quiet. Mum's the word when it comes to that. Make darn no sense. This is uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse uh, 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. He said, kill the Passover. And what else? And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is on the, in the basin. The blood from the lamb, you're going to put that on the door. You know, we already know why that's going to happen because they got to pass over us. That's the same thing, but watch what else. And none of you shall go out of the door. None of you shall do what? Go out at the door of his house until the morning. Exactly what they told Ray. Y'all stay y'all butts inside. All this is testifying to the Messiah. Right? We have to be covered by his blood by obedience. If we are obey him and we do what the man say, then we are covered by his blood. That's our scarlet tie. Right? And we are inside. As soon as we step outside, as soon as that happens, that thing done. I ain't, that thing ain't got nothing to do with me. You step outside, that has nothing to do with me. As long as you're on the inside, you have my word, I'll protect you. You step outside, you just like everybody else in my sight. All right? Eventually, we have to get it together. We have to kind of look at these things. All right? That's how we end up getting, the, getting into the land of Jericho. We'll pick up next week, and we'll kind of talk about how, how, um, how after, after we you know, spied out the land, the men took that back to Joshua. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That was some exciting news because again, we walked into the land, you know what I'm saying, a little, a little uneasy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I know God with us, but you know what I'm saying? Let's see what we're working with. We find out these people are nervous and they scared of us. Oh, that's a different feeling after that. All right, so that's encouraging news for us. And we can kind of see, you know what I'm saying? It's like those type of things. We, we can kind of see how, how God works and how God is moving. And that's what it's about. But it's important for us to it's important for us to rely on each other. You know what I'm saying? If, if the pastors taught the Bible correctly. You perhaps would have more people who actually upheld the truth of the word. And by having those more people, you would have more people to hold each other accountable. You have more people to be like, man, you know you're not supposed to be doing that. You got people right now, sometimes in your family or some people that you know that may go to church or whatever. Or whatever. It's some people you just won't cuss around. Yo, but be cussing like a sailor everywhere else. But some of them you just won't cuss. Like imagine having more of those people in your life that you just couldn't escape. You know what I'm saying? Just more people that you respected so much, it was just like, you know what? I can't do that with you. All right? Or imagine you having somebody come up to you trying to do something wrong, but you believed to the point where you said, you know what? I can't let you do that. All right? It just make it easier. You know, make it just a little bit easier when you got the support of your brothers and you got the support of your sisters. You know what I'm saying? We in a position where we don't have a whole lot of that support because everybody out here has been taught lies. We've all been taught lies. Now, whether we were to remain in that lie is different, right? Not everybody's staying in those lies. But we've all been taught lies, and we had to fight through confusion, had to fight through all these different things. So you have all these pastors, all these Hebrew teachers, all these Muslims, all these different groups teaching all this different stuff, making people believe all, all these different things so nobody agrees. And now we're to the point where we all just so fed up with it. Don't nobody want to be in nobody's business. Your stuff might be right, my stuff might be right, they stuff might be right, who knows who's right. 
let people live and live long and live. What did I say? Live and what did I say? Live and let live. Yeah, live and let live. Let people live and let live. You know what I'm saying? That foolish stuff. How you gonna live if you sin? You dead walking. What's wrong with y'all? Right? We gotta be able to look at the word and be like, okay, well, no, that's what it say. All right? I love my brother. I love my sister. And you say you believe the same thing, right? All right, well, this is what we got to do. We just need a few good men to stand up and start teaching the word right. Right? Across the country. Stand up and start leading the people correctly. We just need a few good women to represent what a, what a woman of God look like. Right? Books say, if you look at Peter, the books say, you know what I'm saying, a woman, she can win her husband over without word. Without word. So if she can win her husband over without word, who's at enmity with her, he's about to ready to divorce her, right? He's a sinner. Why she can't win other people over? Why she can't win other other women over? Why she can't? You know what I'm saying? I love this is woman. She uh she a Hebrew woman. No, you know what I'm saying? She she you know what I'm saying? She don't she don't believe the right stuff. She she talk all these lies. But what I do support with her is represent the Hebrew culture. So our woman, this stuff ain't you know what I'm saying? You gotta be ashamed like you a Hebrew. You a Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Tie in. Look into the Bible and see what we used to do as Hebrews. Tie into that culture and represent it. Who cares? It's us. We ain't got to live like the rest of these people. We ain't got to try to be like these people and try to make excuses for who we are. We good. We Hebrews. Accept it or not. Either way, we rolling. That stuff make it easier when we have a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of people doing the right thing. And it's, it's coming. You know what I'm saying? There's more and more people coming into it. They believe these lies. We ain't cleaned it up. Though most I got to let us clean it up. You know what I'm saying? And when I say us, I mean all his saints. I ain't talking about just me and, and me and my brother. I'm talking about all his saints. Right? The saints gonna clean this stuff up. Disciples go all, all across the world, you know what I'm saying? The 7,000 that ain't nailed they, nailed they need to, uh, to bail. You know what I'm saying? This thing will be cleaned up. Most of God know what he's doing. I trust the man. You know what I'm saying? It's just important that we, we trust the man enough to keep doing what he said. That way when the walls of Jericho come down, we'll see how scared these people are of us. You know what I'm saying? We'll see that all we got to do is just walk in. Walk in, take what we need to take. Right? Most high God ain't taking no prisoners either. That thing ain't done after that. You done. <clears throat> Alright? Any questions? Let's pray out.